People often ask, what is a movement disorder specialist? We are people who are trained in neurology, spend from one to three years doing subspecialty training in Parkinson's disease. In a general neurologist's office, they may only see, you know, three to five people per week with Parkinson's. A movement disorder specialist could see 40 to 50 people per week with Parkinson's. And as a result, you've got a much greater base of experience plus a much deeper fund of knowledge. The first symptoms I saw were on a soccer field. I was a referee for a high school game, and I noticed that on the, my right hand where I carried the whistle, I um, had trembling fingers on that hand. I went to a neurologist at that point in time and was diagnosed with having Parkinson's disease. It was a very quick exam, five minutes. You've got it, uh, nothing we can do about it. You got 10 to 15 good years left. When patients take the time to visit with a movement disorder specialist, I think it really expands the horizon for them because in a very real sense, this is an individualized disease. It's so different from person to person. It's not a cookie cutter approach. There really is a wealth of different opportunities, different medications, therapies, different counseling, support group activities, anything and everything we can do to improve the quality of life for that individual is what we're going to focus on. I attended a seminar where there was a movement disorder specialist who spoke and uh, it was very impressive. I think we both came home and said, we may have, this may be the doctor to go to. When people are brand new to our clinic, we end up spending probably a good 30 to 40 minutes just talking to them. We want to go face to face with the patient and, and see how they're doing. What are the problems they're facing? Are they taking medicines? What kind of benefits or side effects have they had? I probably decided that seeing a movement disorder specialist was going to be a positive in my life about five minutes into the interview with the doctor. He was there to help you and to assist you that if you were a patient of his, you would become a team. After we've talked about their Parkinson's for a while, we're gonna launch into the exam. We are going to do a good general neuro exam. So we're gonna look at the eyes, make sure the hearing is okay, check the muscle strength, make sure the reflexes are good, the sensation is good. You wanna have them stand up out of the chair with their arms crossed, because if they can do that, there's a pretty good chance that both their strength and their balance are intact. In fact, we actually try to pull people over, as weird as it sounds, we try to cause them to lose their balance to see if they can recover, because that tells us a lot about what's happening with their Parkinson's and what challenges we may face in the future. They then drop their arms to their sides and then walk out in the hall and we're looking for everything. Stride length, arm swing, turning, movements that might be a little bit abnormal while you're walking that may not have been present when they were sitting there. Motor symptoms are the typical shaking, stiffness, slowness, difficulty walking, stuff like that. But Non-motor symptoms have to be dealt with more at a conversational level. Non-motor are much more involved with who we are as a human being, how well we're sleeping, if we're feeling depression or anxiety, how our bowels are working, how our bladder is working, sexual function, for example. That's one of the advantages going to a movement disorder specialist because typically they're gonna be aligned with a variety of different specialists, therapists that are working very, very closely with them to provide the best possible Parkinson's therapies, the Parkinson's specific exercises that we talk about in our clinics. I think most movement disorder specialists feel that our caregiver is our greatest ally in caring for the person with Parkinson's. They're present, they know what the issues are. We try to emphasize the role of the caregiver, not only in our ability to take care of the patient, but also we try and focus on the caregiver's health and how well they're doing. Because from the very, very beginning, the caregiver feels an enormous burden. What's gonna happen to my loved one? am I going to be able to care for them? When Dennis was first diagnosed, I was heartbroken. I mean, you know, you think about your vows for better or worse, but you never think 
You don't think worse. And there's many times I just sit here and think, why me? You know, why us? And I think the movement disorder specialist has totally changed my attitude on how I feel about it. Anytime we see him, he's always questioning me. How is it going with you? Are you okay? Are you taking time for yourself? The movement disorder specialist doesn't necessarily take the place of a general doctor or a general neurologist. More or less, they complement what that person is doing. In fact, we've got a lot of people who travel from hours and hours away who they still see their general neurologist on a regular basis, but they see us maybe once a year just to try and keep up with the disease process. One of the biggest challenges we face in movement disorders is the fact that Parkinson's does progress over time. So we try to anticipate when problems will develop and actually prevent them from occurring. And that might involve changing the medication, it might involve a new exercise routine, it might involve diet, weight loss, different aspects of general health issues. When we started exercising, there was a very, very marked change in, in Dennis's improvement. Before we started the exercise program, uh, I could maybe walk a block or two in a neighborhood. Uh, after I was into the exercise program, probably for a couple of months, I was able to walk the entire neighborhood, which is about a mile and a half. If there was one thing that I could say to patients and their family members around the world was, I'd want them to know that there is hope for Parkinson's. And one of the questions I ask people repeatedly, especially in the most advanced stages of this illness, are you still willing to fight? And if you're willing to fight, so am I. You wanna be able to roll on the floor with your granddaughter. Uh, you wanna attend your daughter's wedding and dance. And if it wasn't for this movement disorder specialist, and not just him, but some of the things that he turned us on to, has just made a huge difference. There is something you can do. You can be better than you are in the vast majority of cases. And if you have hope and you find the right doctor, there's a very, very good chance you're gonna succeed in dealing with Parkinson's.